I'm going to show you how to use the macro recorder in Microsoft Excel 2003 to record a VBA macro but actually more than this I'm going to show you how to use the macro recorder in Excel VBA 2003 to teach you about VBA which ultimately is quite a lot more useful than simply being able to record macros. So I've opened Excel here and uh, I've gone straight to Tools and Macro. I'm going to open up the Visual Basic Editor. There it is. Just bring this panel in from the side here. And you can see that for every sheet in the workbook, standard workbook here has got three sheets in it. And for every sheet there's a tab showing up in this thing, the Visual Basic Project, which is associated with this workbook. There's also this um, item here that uh, this workbook, which is a, um, a a pointer, if you like, an access point into uh, actions that you may want to take that relates to the workbook itself rather than any individual sheet. So if we go back to Tools and Macro and say Record New Macro, I'm just going to call it My First Macro and give it a Control key, Control Shift and M. I pressed down the Shift key and pressed M there. Um, the control is is uh, given to me anyway. Um, so capital M or Control Shift and M this then will be the uh, a shortcut key that will cause my macro to execute after I've recorded it. You can always set this kind of stuff later so it doesn't matter too much but just as we pass by here um, I'm mentioning that. Uh, the second thing here really is where are we going to record this macro to and I'm going to record it into this workbook and the effect of recording it into this workbook is, as we'll see, it will get incorporated into the, the project quite nicely down here. So I say OK, and there's my module um, uh, category has appeared on the hierarchy of the project. I'll double click on module 1 to open that up, and we can see here that we've then started to record my first macro into this module one inside the workbook. So I'm just going to close that down so you can see as much as possible of the macro. So remember we are recording now. Now back here over in Excel notice as I click back across I get my recording toolbar which isn't so easy to take hold of. So you have to get it just... there it is. I done it. Oh, it's gone there now. Okay, great. That will do. Um, our recording. Any time we're recording, you should have the recording toolbar will appear. And obviously, if you click over to the other pane, um, let's see if we can do this. Just demonstrate what happened before. I clicked over to the other pane and I didn't see it. Well, that's because it's associated with this the the main window, not with the um, the Visual Basic Editor window, so that's one thing to watch out for, that it may be hiding someplace. Another thing to watch out for is that somebody in their wisdom may have closed it at some stage, and so you don't necessarily see the thing here. If, if it's in that situation, then you can just click on any toolbar and you can uh, right mouse click, sorry, on any toolbar, click stop recording there on the toolbar, stop recording. That's the name of the toolbar, you see. So I'll click on stop recording to make sure I've got my um, recording toolbar showing. Now you've probably noticed that while I was doing all of that stuff, all of my actions inside of the Excel window over here were being recorded over here in the macro editor. I'm still recording but I'm just going to delete those actions because they're um, uh, nothing I particularly want to pay attention to right now. 
and I'm going to click on cell B2. You notice that over here in the macro recorder then, cell clicking on B2 has the effect that the macro recorder has recorded range B2 select. And if I click on C3, it says range C3 select. If I click on D4, it says range D4 select and so on. And I can select a range of cells like that and it says the range select. Now, there's quite a lot of different things all to talk about all at once to begin with here. So I'm just going to pick out uh, one particular thing which is, which is yeah, in a sense key to uh, what's happening here. And that's this button here which is the relative reference button. Notice what happens when I press the relative reference button in. First of all, I've got B2 selected here, so it says range B2 select. I press the relative reference button in, and now click on C3. And you'll notice that something different has happened. So when I've got the relative reference button pressed in, the recorder is recording for me uh, an instruction to move the cell pointer inside of Excel relative to the cell that I did have selected before I pressed the relative reference button in. So if I click on B2 you can see uh, it's saying active cell select, in other words select the active cell. Well B2 was the active cell so that's why it's simply saying active cell select. But if I now select C3 I've moved an offset of one row down, one column across and one row down from what was the active cell. So it's saying active cell offset 1-1 one, one, range A1 dot select, which you can't see because it's off the side there, but in any case that's what it is saying. So in other words, having selected range B2 select while the relative reference button was not pressed in, I can now go to any cell relative to B2 uh, and, it's t and it's telling me the macro instruction that I need to move the cell pointer relative to the specific cell that I selected first off. So here I'm at some minus one minus one, in other words one row back and one column back and one row up from the uh, active cell of B2. Here I'm uh, one column back and one row down. Here I'm uh, one uh, row up and one column across. And so you get the corresponding offset to the cell B2, uh, whichever that was. So I'm just going to select a range of cells here. Um, first off, let's just change the uh, relative selection back again. So, And then I'll select a range of cells here and I'll insert some random numbers. Control and enter to fill the range. And you see what the macro recorder has told me that the equivalent macro instruction for what I just did is selection formula R1C1 equals and then the formula that I just typed in uh, to the cell. And uh, we could make a chart of that, so let's insert chart, go through the wizard here to insert the chart, and insert it as a new sheet, and I'll click finish. And now I'm going to stop the recorder, just delete the chart sheet that I just added, and clear that range that I just cleared. And just to make things a little bit less complicated here, I'm going to take out um, some of the uh, additional stuff that we've got in the macro recorder here. I'm just going to select a range of cells now and uh, tools and macro. To run the macro that I just recorded, I've gone here, tools and macro and macros. There's my macro. Don't forget I've got my control shift and M so I could run it that way but that doesn't show up very visually on the editor so I'm going to run it this way. I'm going to 
go to the macro recorder. Here is a list of all the macros I've got in all the open workbooks as it happens at the moment. Just the one macro which we can see here, which we just recorded. I'm going to click the run button and off it goes and runs. So I'll delete that sheet again. You notice that I took out the instructions here that said range A1 select and uh, I took out even the instructions that said range B2 D4 or whatever it was select no thank you um, so what because I did that what I'm simply left with is that my macro will act on the current selection I took out the instruction that said what selection to make all I'm left with then from the macro recorder is to say whatever the current selection is when I run the macro that's the selection which we're going to apply the macro to so we're going to fill whatever is the currently selected range with my formula add a chart and make it a 3D column chart now if I've got one cell selected when I run the macro control shift and M I get a chart with one item in it and back on the sheet you see I've added my formula to a single cell if I select a whole bunch of cells, Control Shift and M, then I run apply the same macro, but now to that entire range. So by actually taking out any reference to what particular range of cells I've uh, I'm applying my macro to, I've made my macro more general. That's to say, it can I can use the same macro here for um, a, a a whole number of, of slightly different scenarios. So that was a very quick introduction to the macro recorder. The thing that I am particularly keen to to let you know about is just that you can do this sort of thing where you put the macro recorder alongside the Excel window and then you can really use this um, kind of way of working to uh, let you know, have Excel tell you, in fact, what is an equivalent kind of uh, macro instruction for anything that you might want to do in Excel. So in this case we added a chart, we filled a range with numbers. Anything that you might want to do in Excel you can find out using the macro recorder, you can find out what the equivalent VBA code for that is. And so if there's one thing that can be said for the macro recorder, the macro recorder is wonderful at um, teaching you about what uh, instructions to use in Excel VBA to incorporate in your macro. You notice I didn't have to look up any reference books, I didn't have to know anything very much about anything um, in order to find out what the VBA code to in insert, uh, fill a range with numbers and then uh, make a chart from that range. So the macro recorder is a very good instructional tool for learning about Excel VBA and I recommend that more than anything else you use it in that way.